The man now sports, as you can see from the thumbnail, Isaiah Thomas has weighed in on Kobe bringing Bayern, not so much the GOAT debate really, but just just the greatness of Kobe Bryant. Um, it, Isaiah Thomas, man, he kind of became, I, I think he came became acquainted with Kobe Bryant, you know, uh, through his playing days and stuff like that. And he was able to, you know, sit down and watch some film with him and pick his brain and, you know, and work out with him, stuff like that, man. And, uh, you know, so uh, his perspective on this on this conversation is going to be good. I want y'all to hear what he said and all that stuff, man. But before we get started, uh, um, first and foremost, we got a full episode ready for you. So uh, stick around all the way to the end. You don't want to miss everything, especially uh, the final topic. You don't want to miss that. So stick around to the last uh, the last segment of this episode. Also, um, if you're watching us from Facebook, head over to YouTube. If you're not subscribed to us on YouTube, go ahead and give us a sub on YouTube. Hit the thumbs up on your way in. A lot of y'all been watching. And y'all been enjoying the content because y'all been commenting, but y'all forgetting to hit the thumbs up, man. So hit that like button. And for those of you who's already subscribed, also make sure you hit that notification bell so you can get all the lives as soon as they uh as soon as they hit, because uh, you don't want to miss some of the stuff that we were dropping. Um, with that being said, I do want to go ahead and let you know that we are sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the best place to play fantasy sports. I want to tell you about the easiest way to get in on some NBA action with Underdog Fantasy and that pick them game. Just find your favorite player or any player for that matter. Pick higher or lower on that player's stats and you can win up to 20 times your money in one night. Pick between two or five players to fill your pick them entry. Get every pick right and you can net yourself some serious cash. Use the promo code man down sports and you can get your deposit double up to a hundred dollars you got to check on the map to make sure your state is eligible to play underdog fantasy but as soon as you do and if your state is go ahead and download underdog fantasy's app use the promo code man down sports and you can like i said you can get that a hundred dollar uh match on your first deposit and i would want to thank underdog fantasy for sponsoring man down sports all right so let's go ahead and listen to what Isaiah Thomas. I think the guy who's interviewing him is just a regular guy like me that used to hoop. And um, I think he has a podcast. His Twitter handle might be Ball Facts, I think. Um, and I, I like I like his takes as well. You know, so if y'all can go ahead and find him on YouTube or find him on X, uh, do that Ball Facts, I think. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, Ball Facts. But here's IT. I- the, now the Durants and the LeBrons and the Currys. Who's the one guy? Where you just saw it and you were like, he's the best player I've ever seen. Kobe. Kobe. He didn't have You just take. feared him right when you stepped on the court. Like like his his energy was for you to fear. I've never seen somebody offensively. Obviously, I mean KD is offensively gifted. Kyrie. Tell me the time frame that it was with Kobe though. I mean, right when I got in the league. Twenty eleven. Because twenty eleven, you still twenty ten, they yeah, they won. They won. 2011, still, Dallas won. I still think he was the best player in the league until 2013. For sure. When I when I seen him, and every move was just so, everything he did was so strategic and just, I'd never seen somebody that sharp. Can you imagine his preparation? I can. And it was insane. But I've never seen somebody that sharp. And then when I got to build a friendship with him and hear him talk about the game, uh, on a level that I've never heard before. Nobody come close. Mm-hmm. We know this shit. Why is the why is this not universally recognized among media nowadays and casual fans? I think the popularity contest. Like obviously, whoever they say is in front of him. I mean, the name might be bigger. More personal. But like, what what it goes back to? Peers. Yeah. What are most peers gonna say? Right. They're all gonna say Kobe. They're all gonna say except this generation, which I get because LeBron is who they worship, who they come up with. And LeBron is cold, cold. In but a different galaxy himself. Kobe, I can only imagine how Jordan was back then. Right. Because Kobe was a, to me, was a, just a little bit sharper than I say this, a little bit more fluid, a little bit sharper. In everything he, that he did. In every movement. And an extension of Jordan. And the, and the thing that I say, I say Jordan's always number one because Kobe had to follow somebody. Jordan was a blueprint. But but <laughs> Kobe, if you want to follow somebody and follow everything and make it better, man, he did that with the best player ever. 
think about that. So how is he not the best player ever? That's facts. Come on, man. What are we talking about? That's facts. Man, uh, first and foremost, uh, they, they, they said something I slightly disagree with because uh, uh, he asked them uh, or what time frame. You know what I'm saying? Because he asked them who was the best player. You seen them all. You seen you seen LeBron. You seen KD. You seen Kyrie. Who was the best? And he said, "Man, Kobe, hands down, not even close." He said he hasn't seen nobody that sharp. He said, uh, uh, "As as far as you know, his IQ and watching film, he said nobody's even close. If you talk basketball with him, he said it's not even close." And he played with LeBron in Cleveland. You know, so he played with some good some good players, and he and he he will be able to compare them. However. Uh, when he said the uh, it didn't say this, the but it did agree with it. He said that he think uh, Kobe Brown was still the best player all the way up to 2013, and I think that was a year later uh, than what I think. I think he was the best player up to the 2011 2012 season, uh, and I think uh, his last year making the playoffs. Let me see. Uh, I think I got I got it here. His last year making the playoffs was 11 and 12 yeah so 2011 2012 his last year making the playoffs and um you know that's 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 right around the time i say that he stopped being the best player not not because he didn't make the playoffs but yeah i I think um the decline that he had is the reason they didn't make the playoffs but i'm not saying just because they missed it because i mean even if his co-star or uh you know he had a couple of uh players get hurt or something like that and his team didn't make the playoffs they don't necessarily mean that he's not still at the height of his uh his dominance um you know so but that wasn't the circumstance i think the circumstance was because kobe Bryant wasn't his uh best self is the reason why they didn't make playoffs plus lebron was arriving lebron was you know he was he was there at that, at that time and um he, he was at his height so i think i think 2011 2012 was his last year being the best not 2013 all right um so other thing they said he asked them so the things that you're saying about kobe uh he was the best and and his iq was here and there and he was sharp and he was feared and his energy was was to be feared and all these things he's saying he was like if if we know that like they both agree with that a lot of other players agree with that i mean there are a lot of players jim jackson jamal Crawford, you name it trevor reza uh kd carmelo like it's just so many players Kawhi, Kyrie, is so many players and a lot of them play with Kobe and I mean or play with LeBron but there's so many players that admit that no Kobe was the guy this is not LeBron's era this is Kobe's era right Kobe had this lock all the way probably from I mean his first championship was 2000 he was 21 years old you know Shaq was still the man but I think around probably the last championship they got at the three p i think i think kobe had surprised surprised uh shaq by that time you know especially that last one that they lost when shaq was a thousand pounds and was getting ran up and down the court by the wallace boys and and wallace being six seven six eight guarding shaq down low in the paint and doing a hell of a job now that wasn't that that wasn't the best player in the league. It definitely wasn't Shaq then. But so um I whatever year that was, let me see. whatever year that was, that uh championship, uh oh one, oh two. And that's when Kobe was twenty three years old. I think that's when he came became he averaged twenty six points that season. And then the next season after that was the year they lost it to Detroit. He averaged thirty two that that season. Um yeah, I think at 23, 24 is when when Kobe was the best player. Um, so if 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 I take it all the way up to 2012, in my opinion, Kobe was the best player from 01 to 12. So about 10 to 11 years. Kobe was the best player for about 10 to 11 years, um, in my opinion. And IT agrees as well. But he's saying if we all believe that and we all know that it's – fans and players how come the media don't acknowledge that and uh and speak to it uh that way and he was saying i don't know it's a popularity contest 
they got that guy chosen or pick, you know, uh, maybe the name is bigger. And he's saying, look, man, I don't care who it is, LeBron or who it is. And LeBron is great, but he's not Kobe. Like, this is so many people are saying this, right? Um, so I, I, I don't I don't get it. And, and the best thing that I think he said, and I've heard this before, too, is uh, Michael Jordan was the blueprint. And what Michael Jordan did and what he perfected and how he played the game and how he thought the game and how he approached the game and how he, you know, all of that, all that stuff. Kobe mimicked that thing, that thing. But a lot of people will, uh, would admit that there's something that he added to it that Michael Jordan didn't bother to add. I, I ain't going to say he didn't bother to add, but he didn't bother to display it. And that's the three-point shot. They think Kobe's three-point shot was better than Mike's and the ball handling skills pause Kobe, Kobe Bryant was as good as, I mean he he was as good as any two guard I've ever seen handle the ball all right I mean you think about all the great two guards man you think of you know Booker right now uh Clyde Dressler back then Jordan Mitch Richmond Glenn Rice uh Isaiah Ryder Latrell Spreewell Allen Houston Allen Iverson. I, Iverson was a two guard. Iverson obviously handled the ball better than uh, Kobe, but Kobe's right there. Uh, D Wade. Oh, Kobe is better than every two guard. Ray Allen. Every two guard you can think of. Kobe probably got more handles, better handles than all of them except Iverson. Right. So Michael Jordan didn't have that. Now, did Michael Jordan need that? Nah, he didn't need it. Right. Um, so uh, Michael Jordan was a guy that didn't you know he really didn't like to waste anything a waste movement you know he, he'd get his shot with two dribbles or less you know he probably only had a ball for you know five seconds or less he's not gonna hold it and, and pound the air out of it and you know so he did everything efficient and um even somebody like me uh i was a i was a good ball handler until someone pulled me aside and said you know, you're you're playing these kids and you playing with them on the perimeter and you're doing all these dribbling where when you're faster than them, all you gotta do is blow by them and get the layup. And some old head told me that he seen me at the park and you know, I work I worked with him a little bit and then after that I stopped being fancy. I mean it was no it was no point. So it, it's really no point to be that fancy or be that nice, but the point is Kobe was nice with the handles and he he stretched his uh uh shooting to the three-point line why well, i think he was a little bit better than jordan from the three-point line the percentages are, are very similar uh, but i'm not gonna go off present it per percentages because um you know some some percentages or is what it is because sometimes the shots are difficult like uh you being michael jordan or kobe you're not getting the shot that's not contested like you show up to a a, a, a game and the team has been game planning for you for days and they got the scouting report on you and they're putting their best defender on you whether it's going to be jordan or pippen you know when they were still playing whether it's going to be eddie jones bruce bowen shane battier tony allen the kobe stopper reuben patterson doug christie you know whoever the the good wing defender was back then they got the assignment for kobe bryant and he's not the only one who got the assignment the whole team is geared towards stopping him from scoring. So he's going to see double teams, sometimes triple teams. He goes see traps. Uh, and they, like I said, that great defender that's guarding him is going to do a heck of a job as well. So with with all of that, it, you know, if, if Kobe waited on a shot that was open, he probably would only get five shots a game. You know, so when you're getting defended that heavily, you have to be able to practice getting shots off with a hand in your face and against uh getting physical contact and defense uh on your on your lift and your takeoff right so um but you know contrast that with someone like rondo uh who can dribble around the perimeter and the game plan on him is if he can hit that jump shot let him hit it because you know he's not really a threat so they'll back off of him and give him a jump shot or somebody like lebron and when his jump shot was really shaky they back off of them if they if they set a screen they go under the screen, right? So someone like LeBron would see more open threes than uh, a, a Kobe Bryant or, or Michael Jordan. No one's leaving Kobe Bryant open for a three. Nobody's going on the Kobe Bryant screen 
right? No, you know, it, it, it no one's gonna let JJ Barrera jump out and guard and switch and guard uh, uh Kobe Bryant in the finals. That's not gonna happen, right? That's barbecue chicken, and he go rise up and pull up and shoot it. He ain't even got to get to the rim. The only reason why they was able to get away with that on LeBron is because they know LeBron want to get to the rim. You know, uh, so all right, man, we'll switch on you and put this smaller guy on you, but how you go get to the paint? You know, it, it's it's not gonna happen. We and we got Tyson Chandler down there waiting on you, so whole different dynamic when you can shoot. So uh, yeah, but uh, I, I think that's interesting that it said it uh, and, and the way he said it, um, and, and, and the way he said that uh, the media just doesn't see it the same way and maybe they do but you know maybe they got an obligation for for you know i don't know um pushing lebron pushing the agenda i don't know you know um i i do know one thing is um you know uh shannon sharp 2012 like like i said my time frame of when i think kobe was still the best was 11 12 year the 2011 2012 year that was the last year he made the playoffs. And here's Shannon Sharp tweeting, agreeing with me. Greatest basketball player of all time, guy, Air Jordan, Kobe, in that order. All right, go Lakers, right? Um, you know, so there's a lot of people, even media members who who probably know better. But for some odd reason, we, we'll get into uh, a little bit uh, later on uh, on another topic. Uh, the media uh, is pushing a, a, a narrative for, you know, false narrative and, and and for whatever reason they're doing it i don't know entertainment uh you know financial game i don't know right um but the last thing i say before i get off this topic uh with mike being the blueprint and so many people overwhelmingly admitting and agreeing that michael jordan is the goat and the best we've ever seen if he's so good and and, and when i say good I mean, this is you evaluating him as a player, not so much evaluating his resume, right? You evaluate him as a player and you're admitting, it's the best I've seen. If we're admitting that Mike is that, and then we also admit that Kobe Bryant is so close to Mike, then how is Kobe not right behind Mike on, on the media's list? Why is he always at number nine and number 10? And um and, and if you and if you telling me and like I said I don't have Kobe number two I got him three I got Kareem two and my my reasoning behind it is um I know that you just don't use the eye test and you just can't evaluate the player and see which player is better because if you don't take what you are good at and take your gifts and use it to achieve great things then uh you know that goes into the 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 whole pot to grade as well. So I grade the player and then grade the resume. And when I grade the player, I got Mike has been the best and I got Kobe has been the second best. But when I grade Kobe's resume, not 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 because of his fault, it's just by circumstances. Like, you know, he couldn't help that he got drafted by the Lakers with Shaq there. Right. So um, what happens is it looks like he had an easy path to his first three rings because he was playing with Shaq, even though Shaq got to the finals and got swept by uh, Hakeem and never got there again. Left Orlando, went to the Lakers, had two all-stars in Van Exel and, and Eddie Jones. He had Rick Fox. He had Elton Campbell. Uh, he, you know, he, I mean, he had a lot of good players that was there uh, and they couldn't get past John Stockton and Carl Malone in Utah. They kept thumping them. Right. So Shaq out there being overpaid, not living up to his height, can't get past Utah, and then here comes this kid shoots two air balls in the in, in a playoffs against Utah, and you know, but everybody's saying that this dude got balls, and then he's getting benched because Dale Harris don't believe in playing rookies and, and high schoolers, and you know he had to you know pretty much play behind Eddie Jones until Phil Jackson got down and was like hell nah, this is the kid, right? So it took three years for Kobe to be able to. You know, really show us what he could do. Um, and for that, his resume takes a hit. Right. Um, so, yeah, when you grade in a resume, it's going to be several resumes probably better than Kobe's. Jordan's for sure. Kareem's for sure. Um, probably. Yeah, maybe Russell, maybe, maybe 
maybe magic maybe bird you know so it's 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 some resumes out there better than uh kobe's but he's so good as a player he's like i said he's right behind mike he can still fall at number three for me because the gap between his resume and magic's resume is not bigger than the gap between kobe as a player and magic as a player if that makes sense you know and that goes for the other people i got him ahead of so he falls at number three for me and um that's i mean that's probably why i'm gonna keep it. i don't i don't i don't see the the debate for me starts at number four and and that's when we're talking about uh bill russell wilt um magic bird um lebron oscar you know that you know we can start debating there at number four but for me one two and three is no is no debate is 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 mike kareem and kobe um <laughs> so Tra- draymond green oh man interesting draymond green man man well ever, ever since he signed the clutch sports man Oh boy, Draymond Green and Clutch Sports. This is this is this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be a good episode. <laughs> Draymond Green and Clutch Sports. I, I heard this sound bite before. It's probably a year or two old. I heard this sound bite. And you know, I, I ain't think nothing of it, man. But uh then I started thinking like, man, the things he's saying, man, like this this ain't this ain't it. This ain't it. So I'm, I'm going to play for you what Draymond Green. First of all, Draymond Green said LeBron got drafted in 03, and by 05, he was already the best player in the league. Are you serious? And then he said he was the best player all the way to 2020. So you're trying to make the claim LeBron was the best player in the league for 15 years in the middle of Kobe Bryant's prime. Come on, man. But I'm gonna, you're going to have to hear this twice because I'm going to play it. I'm going to play it once so you can hear it in its entirety fully without any pauses. But then I'm going to go back and I'm going to break down each of his points that he's trying to make, which are several points, but incomplete points at that. You know what I mean? Like incomplete, like um, like if I say, you know, uh, I'm the greatest singer of all time because can't nobody do what I do. But I don't tell you what it is I do. I just say, yeah, can't nobody do what I do. And he's like, okay, what do you do? Like, what, what is it that you do that's good that can't nobody else do? That's what, that's how Draymond was talking. Like, he was talking in incomplete sentences. I've never said, this is worse, this is worse than the David West uh, uh, Bigger, Stronger, Faster take uh, from a video a couple of days ago. But listen to Draymond uh, try to explain why uh, LeBron is uh, number one on the GOAT list. Who your top five? My top five is LJ number one, MJ number two, Cole number three, Steph number four, and Shaq number five. Okay. You got Bron first. Yes, because what Bron has done, like when you talk about Sicily Tyson, yeah, Bron started in 03. By 2005, Bron was the best player in the NBA. Yeah. In 2020, he was still the best player in the NBA. He was the best player in the NBA no matter what the game did. The game went from two slugs, like slow big man, to like a stretch four big man, to like back to two big man, to like no big man. You out there playing the bone of facts. And he's been the best no matter what. When you look at the teams that Bron has carried to championship, or carry to the finals. MJ didn't beat the greatest team ever assembled, nor did he run up against the greatest team ever assembled every year. You look at the skill set that Bron has, there's nobody that has ever played the game of basketball that can do what LeBron James does on basketball court. Nobody. Michael Jordan could do just about all that LeBron James does. Except for he for damn sure couldn't pass like Bron. Mm-hmm. They had a vision like, like that. I love MJ. I think MJ is incredible. Like MJ is MJ. Like we all wanted to be like Mike. Like mm-hmm. I wear twenty three. Come on now. Like 
We all want to be like Mike. But what LeBron has been able to do and how he can control a game and, like, to, to do it this long, like, MJ retired. Like, this shit's grueling. Like, yeah. going to the finals year after year after year, LeBron went eight or nine straight Nine years. straight. Like, MJ took a break and right in the heat of that shit. LeBron mm-hmm. ain't taking no break. You know what he did? When again and again and again and again. With different guys every time. And again. So, for me, that's why it's Brian over MJ for me. And on top of that, the talent nowadays is way better. And I'm sure one of the old f- is going to say, you <laughs> out of your mind. And this, that, and the other. Blah, blah, blah. The talent is way better. Just like the talent at Apple yeah. is way better than the talent that was working at Apple Everything in 1991. Back, right. Fame is way better, way different now. And it's crazy, Brian's still up there, man. So he's still doing it. Still doing one it. One or two, three, you know. you best 20. in the league. It's crazy. It's year 20. 20 is crazy. Playing he's at a still, high level. He's still at the top of the discussion in year 20. I hear. All right, that was 2020 when they did, when they did that. I think it was probably after he won that bubble ring. So I'm going to play this again and I'm going to pause it and I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I guess, uh, deal with each point that he tried to make. Uh, but before I even started, I, I, I do want to say this, and this is me personally. I, you know, I, I, I wish every, everyone would think something similar like this, but this is me personally, right? When we're talking about who's better and, and especially when we're talking about the GOAT, or the all-time list uh let's let's take it before lebron before kobe before all of that it was a consensus there was a lot of people that agreed that it was michael jordan overwhelmingly a lot it's still overwhelming but even more then right you had you had your old older guys who probably still would say kareem or will or dr j i mean some might even say oscar right but it was very few people that would say that most people would agree Michael Jordan, this is the best we ever seen. Um, but it just depends on uh, what your criteria is on determining who the GOAT is. Your, t- your criteria might just be rings, and you might say it's Russell, right? I mean, how, I mean, for somebody to win that many times, 11 times, he's got to be the GOAT, right? So it might be different for people. But for me, M- Michael, Michael Jordan showed – well, his motivation for playing in the league was to – perfect his craft perfect everything about basketball that he could that you know that he needed to win right that's what he was doing so michael jordan had two motivations become a complete basketball player on both ends of the floor and win right his motivation wasn't the stats his motivation wasn't um awards and all this stuff his motivation was how good can i get how many holes can I feel that's in my game? Because, I, you know, some people admit, Kenny Smith said that, uh, Michael Jordan couldn't handle the ball that well at North Carolina when he showed up. By the time he got to the league, he was a great ball handler, right? A lot of people said that Michael Jordan's jump shot wasn't all that good when he got to the league at first. By the time he was in year two or three, his jump shot was phenomenal, right? Um, so, you know, things of that nature. Like, So he, he was – people said he wasn't that strong the way Detroit was throwing him around. He got in the weight room, hired a trainer got really really strong so um that's what mj was on perfect my game i want to be able to do it all on both ends and then i want to win that was his motivation so with that being his motivation he actually became a complete basketball player with not with not many holes in his game if any a lot of people say he had no weaknesses no holes in his game so i go with that no weaknesses no holes in his game and then once he became a complete player and he started winning, then we was like, oh, man, this dude racking up championships. And once he racked up six championships and then we look at, you know, everything else he achieved. Oh, man, 10 scoring titles, uh, nine times uh, all defensive team, defensive player of the year, steals champion, uh, number one uh, blocks for uh, uh, guards all the time. And so that got broken by D-Wade, you know, things of that nature, right? Uh, playing all 82 games out of his 15 year career he probably did it 11 to 12 times you know played all 82 games that's crazy right so you know we start we were able to look at his paper resume 
But what was first and foremost in the foundation of Michael Jordan being the GOAT was being a complete player and winning. Now, I say that to say this. Kobe followed him and had the same motivation. I want to be a better player than Michael Jordan. I want to be complete. Everything that Michael Jordan perfected, I want to perfect it and more. So he went in the lab and was doing the same thing, getting stronger, asking questions. Oh, I want to be good at defense, picking Gary Payton's brain when he was, you know, just anybody he would just talk to and pick their brain trying to get better. Talked to all the Laker greats. He even went and talked to some Celtics uh, greats, uh, you know, uh, uh, Larry Bird and Bill Russell. He would talk to anybody that he wanted to pick their brain to get better, right? Um, and that came from Gary Payton's mouth himself and Kobe's mouth. Like, that's how he was. And, and, and you've seen clips of it when he was at the All-Star game playing against Jordan, and he asked him how he did a certain uh, thing in the post. How did you feel that I was about to go that way, blah, blah, all this stuff. That's what he was a student. He was trying to perfect his game and he got daggone very, very, very close. Robert Ory would say that he got very close. Michael Jordan had the game that had no holes and he said Kobe had the game with very few holes, which was really only his post defense. He said everything else, he had filled those holes just like Jordan did. So we got a player with almost no holes and a player with no holes, you know, you know, by the standards of a lot of players, uh, you know, saying that. So the comparison started because we can see on the court, man, this guy is complete. This guy can hoop. This guy is unstoppable. He's ferocious on defense. The comparison started. What where Kobe fell a little short at is with his resume. His resume isn't as stacked as Michael Jordan's. So the so the GOAT debate between Jordan and Kobe stopped kind of quick. But it, it started because Kobe made itself a complete player now we get to lebron james his motivation was i want to be the goat but he didn't look at kobe and mike and said man they perfected their game they got the jump shot the mid-range the post the footwork they're playing defense uh ferociously and all this stuff. he didn't look at that and say that's what i want to do he didn't say i want to perfect my craft and be a complete player with no holes in this game he said, whatever holes I got in my game, I can get a teammate. I can handpick a teammate to, to cover that hole up for me, right? For, for example, he can't shoot that well when he first came in the league. But he's a great facilitator with the ball. So what does he do? The offense was installed to where everybody on the court with LeBron James preferably needs to be a shooter including his center big z shooter had to had to bear to shoot he didn't post up mo, mo, uh, much with lebron james mo williams shooter booby gibson shooter Danielle marsh at the four shooter antoine jameson when he had him shooter the guys who wasn't shooters didn't stay there long larry hughes came and went he's not a shooter so hey i i'd rather have pavel uh, uh playing because he's a shooter than larry hughes larry hughes a better player but i want the shooter Booby Gibson, I want the shooter. Uh, um, uh, what's my man name? Uh, Damon Jones, shooter. Like those guys work really well with uh, LeBron. I'm not a shooter. Just give me the ball in the middle of the floor. Y'all spread the floor. I find you. Instead of him saying, "Let me become a good a shooter as Michael Jordan and Kobe did," he said, "Let just give me teammates that can do it, and we'll make it work that way." The problem with that is when you get great shooters. They're usually not all. They're usually not all-star level players, right? There's not a lot of all-star level players back then that were great shooters. Ray Allen was one of them. Michael Red was an all-star a couple of times, but other than that, the all-star level players were players like LeBron, Wade, Iverson. Now these are not complete shooters. These are not. Uh, these are not great shooters. So in order for you to say I need shooters around me, that means you need average players. That's I mean, it, it, you know, that's why his team was, you know, seem to look average because he wanted them all to be shooters, and those ten don't, they, those don't usually are um, be the the players on his level, right? So he went about it the wrong way. He put his eggs in the wrong uh, uh, box. I, I want all my eggs in the, uh, I you know, I need to get my resume to match Kobe and Mike's, or not even Kobe, probably just looking at Mike. So instead of him saying, I want my game 
to be modeled like Mike. He said, let me look at everything Mike got on his resume and let me try to catch him that way. I don't think I can complete. I don't think I can get my game as complete as Mike. So let me try to just catch the resume. He got six rings. I go for six. He, he you know, he tried to do it his way in Cleveland. It wasn't working. So he was like, I'm, 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 I'm running out of time. I need to catch Mike. So he rushed it. He took a shortcut, went to Miami, made a super team. And he told them not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, not eight, not nine. He, that's how many rings he really wanted to get with that super team. And he was only able to get two. Not as easy as he thought it was, even with a super team. He was like, man, how the hell did Mike and, and, and Kobe do this? I'm, I don't, I don't lost three uh, championships already, uh, uh, and I'm halfway through my career. I only got two, two out of two out of five, right? So um, he was like, "Well, shoot, man, am I gonna be able to catch six? So now he's on his third thing. The first thing was, I'm not gonna be able to be as good as Kobe and Mike. Then the second thing was, let me catch the rings, and he was, he realized that's not easy. Then he said, "Well, the way I'm." accumulating all these stats let me just get as high as possible on the all-time stat list and then maybe that'll work and if i just keep for if i just keep forming teams i leave i leave every time my co-star get old i leave and get a newer younger one that's not hurt and i just kind of keep everything going so i can get in the championship and 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 you know and it hopefully i can get six but i definitely can get these stats so he went for the stats that's hit that was his back door into the GOAT conversation. All right, so I say I'll let to say this. Draymond Green, <laughs> we, we about to listen to this again. Here's Draymond Green. I'm going to stop it when I get to a point. Who your top five? My top five is LJ number one, MJ number two, Cole number three, Steph number four and Shaq number five. Okay. You got Bron first. Yes. Because what Bron has done, like, when you talk about Sicily Tyson. Yeah. So he said what Bron has done, and then he stopped and didn't tell us what Bron done. Then he said, when you talk about Sicily Tyson, and I think what he's trying to say is Cicely Tyson is an actor. And she played in a lot of movies and and she's been acting for a long time. She's got longevity. So I guess he's trying to speak to his longevity. And then he's going to say this. Brown started in 03. By 2005, Brown was the best player in the NBA. Pause. Is that true? Let's fact check that. Is that true? Was He came in in 2003, missed the playoffs as a rookie. But the rookie Carmelo Anthony and the rookie D-Wade both was in the lottery with LeBron, but they took their teams to the playoffs as rookies. LeBron James missed the playoffs as a rookie. And 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 Melo was in the West. It's stacked out there. For him to make the playoffs in the West as a rookie, that's impressive. LeBron didn't make it in the East. Second year, LeBron missed the playoffs again. So he's telling me I LeBron missed the playoffs in 03, missed the playoffs in 04. By 05, he was the best player in the league. All right, let's 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 look at this. 05-06 season highlighted in yellow. That's the year that Kobe Bryant averaged 35.4 points a game. Kobe Bryant also had that's the year that Kobe Bryant scored 81 points against Toronto. He also had a game where he scored 62 points. He scored 51 points twice. He scored 50 points twice. A bunch of 40 points in there. The man was on fire. Didn't have that much of a squad. He playing with uh, Bill Walton and Smush Parker. But it's clearly Kobe Bryant who's the best player in 05, 06. I'm sorry. I just don't see where LeBron was the best player in 05, 06. Um, uh, he was the scoring champion that year. He was the scoring champion in 06 and 07. Um, he, was, he could have been scoring champion in 2010. But it was between him and Kevin Durant, and it was up to the last game. And uh, Kobe Bryant decided to seek that game out to get ready for the playoffs. So, I mean, we can document it right there at 2005, 2006, and kind of, in my opinion, clearly say that Le that LeBron was not the best player in the league. It was still Kobe Bryant. Yeah. 
In 2020, he was still the best player in the NBA. In 2020, the year that he won in the bubble, I guess that was your reasoning for saying he was the best player in the NBA. But that's the year Giannis won the MVP, and I think he got back to back. And all I could remember is everyone telling me that Giannis was the best player in the NBA then. So I'm confused, right? I'm very confused. And 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 I don't think LeBron has been the best player ever since 2014. I don't think he's been the best player in the year uh, in the in the league. So definitely wasn't in 2020. He was the best player in the NBA no matter what the game did. The game went from two slugs, like slow big man, mm -hmm. to like a stretch four big man, to like back mm -hmm. to two big man, to like he, no you, big man. You out like, there playing the bone of like, facts. What does that have to do with anything? The the Just because the game changed and LeBron was still in the league and still performing well, don't make him the best player like the the points he's making he was in the league he was the best from 05 to 2020 which was a lie and then he says that it, I, I don't know like, what, what the the we had big men in the league and then we went to stretch fours and then we went back to big men and lebron still is like lebron's not a big man he's a wing so I mean, what what does that change? So you went from two big dudes down low to a wide open paint, actually was a a, a a plus for him. That made things better for him for the way he played. That that doesn't tell me that he's the best. But he since he want to say he was the best in the league for fifteen years from two thousand five to two thousand twenty, I already showed you that oh four oh five oh six was was Kobe. Let me tell you what else uh, Kobe did so we can get a, a glimpse of how long Kobe was the best, right? 0506 is Kobe. So here we go to 07, 06, 07. He averaged 32 points uh, uh, that year, 06, 07. He was the scoring champion that year, year, year as well. Then he got another display where he's on, uh, you know, on the, on the court with all the greats because it's the All-Star game. He got All-Star MVP that year as well in 07. Um, he got All Star MVP in two thousand nine. He got All Star MVP in two thousand eleven. Um, he got the league MVP in two thousand eight. He got to the finals in two thousand seven, two thousand eight, when he first got Paul Gasol and Phil Jackson back. Lost to the Celtics. Went back to the finals oh eight oh nine. Uh, beat Orlando, the same Orlando team that beat LeBron and put him out of the playoffs. All right, the, the team that beat LeBron, Kobe beat him in a gentleman's sweep in a crazy dominating fashion. Then he went back and played that same Boston Celtics team that had the super team in 2009 and 2010, and then he beat them. In between all of that, 2004, LeBron James goes to the Olympics and lays a dud. And uh, Oto and, and comes back with the bronze, which is why everybody gave him the nickname LeBron. Then in 2006, they go back to the FIBA World Cup and get bronze again. They losing to Argentina and Ginobili is is whooping them. Spain is whooping them. Carlos uh, led by Carlos Aurora. like they getting whooped by these guys. You know, uh, they looking like the best players on the floor, right? And then Kobe Bryant decides. Man, I'm tired of seeing y'all lose. I'm going to come play with y'all in 08. Listen to what Coach K, who was coaching the team, said about Kobe in 08. Coach, do you, do you have any favorite uh, Kobe stories? Yeah, you know, uh, a number of them. The best one, or one of the best ones, was you know, when we uh, were starting to build a culture uh, at uh, USA Basketball, and he, Chauncey Billups, and Jason Kidd were added to add uh, veteran leadership to LeBron and Carmelo, and you know those those guys who were great guys. And so we're getting ready to <laughs> uh, uh, to, to get ready for Beijing, and uh, so I'm with my staff in Vegas a couple days before the team comes in, and 
uh, all of a sudden there's a knock on the door just two days early and it's Kobe. He said, coach, can, can I talk to you for a minute? And I said, certainly. So we went to a private room and I, I said, what do you need? He said, I, I, I need to ask you a favor. And I, and I said, yeah, what, what is it? And he said, I want to guard the best perimeter player on every team that we play. Now he's the NBA scoring champ. He's the best player in the league at that time. Best player in the he had league. Seven fifty point games that year. And he he knew that he would have to change a little bit and be a leader. And and but he says, I, I you know, I want to guard the best perimeter player. And then he pauses and you know, his eyes, he and Jordan have the same had the same eyes. They killed you with their eyes. And and he leans forward and he said, Coach, I promise you I'll destroy him. <laughs> So I, I got, holy shit. I said, this is good. So uh, we go and we have a team meeting and the first practice, he doesn't take a shot. He does not take one shot. And he, he's playing defense. And so I call him over afterwards. And I said, you know, yo, this destroy thing. He says, coach, I, I promised you I'll destroy him. I said, look, I've seen you destroy teams offensively. Will you shoot the frickin' ball? <laughs> and he smiled, you know, he had that smile. And he said from then on, I was the only coach ever to ask him to shoot. <laughs> and you know what he was doing, JJ? He he had this vision of moments. He knew that for us to win the gold medal, we would have to beat Argentina, whether it be in a semis or the gold medal game. And that he wanted to guard Ginobili. Believe me, he already had that f figured out, and he was going to prepare to guard Chino. It wasn't just to set an example for his team. He had that vision. Crazy. So we do play Argentina in the semis, and we're beating them by 20 points, and Ginobili gets hurt. So now you think we're going to win by 40, and it becomes a six-point game because now he's not interested anymore. That's who he is. That's who he was. God bless him. And so that's the greatness of Kobe Bryant. And this is 2008 when 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 they got their goal and he came in and and, you know, displayed what he displayed and, and volunteered to be the defensive stopper. And because he because he felt like that's what the team needed. And he said, I can't wait to play some of these guys so I can lock them up. And that's exactly what he did. Right. And then he still hit big shots in the championship game. Right? You know, so uh, or it, the game against Argentina. So. Uh, it wasn't like he wasn't scoring, but the the point is, I wanted to point out a couple of things. Coach K is documenting uh, and on the record for saying Kobe was the best player on that team and the best player in the league and the best player in the world at that moment, 2008. So we at least got from 2005 to 2008 where we can get credible sources and credible uh, um, statistical uh, data that a show that Kobe Bryant was at least the best from five to eight right now at the eight. I mean, if you go, if you go win the championship 2008, 2009, mind you, he, he comes back, wins gold at the Olympic games. Then he go back and win a championship. Then win a, a back to back championship and you don't went to the finals three years in a row. And you got the uh, league MVP in 08. I'm trying to figure out wh wh where the room was for LeBron to be the best from 05 to 08. Uh, or really from 05 to 2010, right? I mean, the, that that's the last uh, year Kobe won the uh, finals and finals MVP was 2009, 2010. So at least all the way from five to 10, we can say that the best player was Kobe Bryant. So obviously uh, Draymond Green out here capping real bad. Back, just straight up line for LeBron. Go tell that lie with them young kids on that podcast with him that don't know no freaking better who ain't who you know I, i'm like man come on man they so impressionable and it's and it's people that hear something like that and won't even fact check it and just just assume man lebron been the best in the league since 05 that that's can't be further from the truth right so uh i said earlier in the uh, on, on the last segment that i think kobe bryant was the best player in the league from 2002 all the way to 2012 all right so we done we done already took everything up to his last championship of 2010 
was he still the best in 11 and 12 i mean that, I, I guess you can debate that uh i think lebron won an mvp shortly after that uh let me see when lebron won his mvp um yeah i think lebron won an mvp but i mean we, but we can go we can go to shannon sharp saying this who's the lebron guy 2012 greatest basketball players of all time guy air jordan and kobe in their order so we can say at least in 2012 there was some credible people who still felt like kobe bryant was the best so i'm, I'm gonna go out on a limb and just say yeah i think kobe bryant from all the way up to 2012 so what draymond said 2005 lebron was the best i think kobe was the best from 5 to 12 for sure not 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 lebron and i think lebron got in that time in that in that uh in that space i think he got two mvps right but this is this is the year that his two mvps i think he had the best record in the league twice but both times he got put out of the uh, playoffs early uh we all thought that they was gonna meet the lakers in the finals there was gonna be a kobe and lebron face off and we got let down every single time because lebron didn't hold up his end of the bargain and he kept getting sent home by paul pierce and dwight howard of orlando right um so i don't know how much of a better player he was than kobe I don't think he was better than Kobe at that time at all. Kobe started to decline around 2012, and I think that's when LeBron took over. So, personally, I think LeBron was the best player in the league uh, from 2012 to 2014, and Kevin Durant won the MVP in 14, and that's when he really showed that he had took a step. So, I really think LeBron was on the best player in the league for two to three years. But if I want to be a little bit lenient, let's go back to 2010 when lebron uh had got an mvp i think and kobe that was his last championship um so let's let, let's just be nice and say 2010 so Kobe lebron in my opinion from 2010 to 2014 was the best player in the league right um and then kevin durant took over and then obviously after kevin durant took over steph took over um and you could you could take your pick between KD, Steph, or LeBron, take your pick, right? Uh, I always thought that ever since KD won his first MVP or his only MVP, that's when he became the best in the league. And uh, and, and and I think the last time he was the best player in the league was um, the year he tore his Achilles, right? So I think, I think KD held it down for about four or five years. And then after that, it turned you know everybody said it was uh uh Giannis I still thought it was KD uh everybody said it was Giannis and that and then two years ago they said it was Jokic you know what I mean so uh I don't know how it just keep hopping like that when Jordan was the best player he was just the best player when Kobe was the best player he was just the best player it wasn't like it was something that was switching every year all right so let's listen to the rest of Draymond he's been the best no matter what when you look Debunk. at the teams that Bron has carried to championship or carry to the finals. MJ didn't he like he's not finishing his things. He's not finishing his points. He said when you look at the teams that he's carried to championships, not teams that he's won championships with because every team that he won a championship with was stacked. So he's talking about teams that he carried to the championship we only go talk about one team and that's the team that he got swept by san antonio with in 2005 i think or 2007 whenever whenever how long let me see what year that was uh i think it was 2005 2007 but if you look at this if you look at this path to the conference finals i mean this roster that he's talking about and and let me let, let me show you this 1999 the highlighted uh year at the bottom of uh the graphic that's the year that the new york knicks went to the finals and they lost to tim duncan in the uh, san antonio spurs the reason why i point that out is because i want you to see because everyone has linked lebron's legacy to dragging teams to the finals that don't have no business being to the finals and they're acting like that's unique that's what they've been doing in the east since michael jordan left that the east has been weak right the east had got very weak and the teams on the east usually only had one star one all-star or one superstar with role players and when you look at the washington 
Wizards, they had Gilbert Arenas and role players. Um, and when you look at this New York Knicks team, I wouldn't call them stacked. It depends on who you think Latrell Sprewell and Allen Houston is. Which one? Neither one of them are superstars. Um, consistent all stars? Not not even really. I mean, they they both made all stars before, but consistent. Let's call them all stars. So you got the Knicks with two all stars. No Patrick Ewing. He was injured that year. He was on the roster but injured. They had Larry Johnson after the bad back. They had a young Marcus Camby who really played into the uh, the the second half of the season. Chris Childs. I don't think they had Charlie Ward that year. Chris Childs. But, yeah, I mean, that's not a very impressive roster. And they got to the finals. Right? So, if Allen Houston and Latrell Sprewell can drag their Knicks to the finals, why are we impressed that LeBron can do it? The, all right, let's go to 2000. The Indiana Pacers. Reggie Miller, Mark Jackson. Reggie Miller is a star, all-star, not a superstar, all-star. Now, mind you, none of these teams have superstars on them. You got Reggie Miller, who's an all-star. You got Mark Jackson, good good player, but role player, not even a scorer. Just a good passer. Dell Davis, Antonio Davis. Uh, they could rebound. They're big. And Rick Smix. I like Rick Smix. Rick Smix is good. But that's your co yes, that's your star and your co-star, Reggie Miller and Rick Smith. No superstar on that team. Right? And Rick Smith is kind of equivalent to uh Big Z. Right. And the reason why I'm going over this, because I want I'm gonna show <laughs> I want you to think about the roster that that uh that Cleveland had with LeBron. Uh Philadelphia. Now that's now we're getting to a superstar, Philadelphia. But but this is probably the worst roster I've ever seen in the finals. Philadelphia was Allen Iverson, their superstar, but your superstar is 6'1". A little guy. Right? So you got a superstar surrounded around role players. No no all-star in sight. Nobody even close to all-star. Maybe Matumbo. We can say Matumbo is close, but he's not a scorer. He's a shot blocker, a rebounder. Can't go to him for points like that. Right? Uh, Eric Snow. Eric Snow was the starting point guard on that squad the funny thing about that is they really relied on eric snow and the funny thing about that is eric snow was also on lebron james championship roster but he didn't even get in the game so lebron's roster was so much better than iverson's that eric snow couldn't even get off the bench but eric snow was a starter a key contributor on the Philadelphia 76ers squad with Allen Iverson, right? Uh, Eric Snow, Iverson, Aaron McKee, George Lynch, Matumbo. Not impressive. And then you got two years back to back of Jason Kidd carrying the Nets to the finals. And his second best player was either Kerry Kittles or Kenyon Martin. No all stars. So the East was known for having their star carry them with role players surrounded around him. Allen Houston did it. Reggie Miller did it. Iverson did it. Jay Kidd did it twice. So if none of those guys are superstars, Iverson is, but the rest of them are not. And LeBron James is supposed to be a top five player of all time. Some of y'all think he's the GOAT. If Iverson... And Reggie Miller and Allen Houston and and Jason Kidd can carry a team through the East to get to the finals. Then why are we shocked that LeBron could do it if he's a superstar that's on par with Kobe and Michael? That's that's not impressive that he was able to get that team out of the East and get to the finals and do the same thing. As a matter of fact, he didn't do the same thing because the Knicks didn't get swept by uh, San Antonio. They got they got a game. Indiana got some games against Lakers. Iverson, this team was so stacked. Well, not so stacked, but this team with two superstars on it with uh, Shaq and Kobe, two superstars. They beat everybody in the playoffs. I think they was undefeated. They got to the finals. They could have had an undefeated playoffs, but Iverson had better plans and beat them in game one, shocked them in game one. Even Iverson can get one game. J. Kidd didn't get swept by San Antonio or the Lakers. So if if Iverson can get a game and Jay Kidd can get a game against these stacked teams in the West, why LeBron James gets swept by San Antonio? 
do you want to know why he got swept by San Antonio? Because he couldn't shoot. And the game plan for uh, LeBron James was to make him shoot jump shots, go under his screens, don't double him, don't help off the three-point shooters. And it was an easy 4-0 sweep. But we supposed to be impressed because he's supposed to be so, so-called drag teams to the finals. Now, that's the only team I can think of that he dragged because if you want to think when he went to Miami, that's a super team, so it's not them. Then when he went back to Cleveland the second time, he had Kyrie, Kevin Love, and uh, uh, J.R. Smith. So it wasn't those that he carried to the finals because those are great players. And if it, if we're talking about the year that he was in the finals and uh, against the Warriors and he only had J.R. Smith and uh, Matthew Della Vadova, but he, he also had... Uh, he also had Kevin Love in that series. So that's, I mean, that's that's even a lie. Kyrie Irving had got, that. no, that was the year Kyrie Irving, that's the year he had left and went to Boston. I think. Was it the year he went left and went to Boston? I think so. Right, so uh, that's 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 even a falsehood. So it's only one team that he had that had a real a, a roster that, that looked like it was dry. And that was when he got swept by San Antonio. And like I said, that's not impressive because J. Kidd did it twice. Iverson did it. Allen Houston did it. Reggie Miller did it. And they all won games against those stacked West teams, but LeBron wasn't able to pull one off. Beat the greatest team ever assembled, nor did he run up against the greatest team ever assembled every year. The greatest team ever assembled. So he's talking about the Golden State Warriors team with MVP Steph Curry. Uh, Splash Brother, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, Iguodala, Harrison Barnes. That's not the greatest team ever assembled, but they did win the most games in history. Um, the the they broke the Bulls record. I don't even think the Bulls was the greatest team ever assembled, but they did have the greatest player of all time on it. So maybe you can make that argument. But no, I don't think the Warriors was the greatest team ever assembled. I think I think they hit the league by storm right at the right time and it took people a while to figure out kind of like when Miami Dolphins first started doing a wildcat and people couldn't figure it out or like when uh, Cam first started going crazy with that read option you know it takes the league by storm and it takes people a, a, a year or two to kind of catch up or uh, you know or uh, uh, put a roster uh, uh, together to kind of uh, maybe contend with it so you know them shooters the way they were shooting and the offense that was running and all that stuff, man, it took people a while to figure out what was going on. But it wasn't the greatest team ever, ever, ever assembled. I think they just caught fire at the right time. Uh, but just because LeBron beat them makes him better than somebody? No, they don't make you the GOAT. I, re- I, I would rather be the player who the team is the best because I'm on it than the player that said, oh, I was able to beat this team. Michael Michael Jordan was the head honcho of a 70 plus win team. Not the person who 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 was able to beat them in the finals. I mean because if you're so much better than Steph Curry, why 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 is the Warriors you know so favored over you? If if you're LeBron James, you have no equal in Golden State. Steph Curry was not your equal. You was LeBron you was at the height of your, your your power. Steph was not your equal. Kyrie Irving and Steph was on the same level. So when you actually look at the roster, Kyrie and Steph was on the same level. Kevin Love and Clay was on the same level. Or you could say, you could say Clay and J.R. Smith. I think Clay was a, a, a level above J.R. Smith, but J.R. Smith is 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 really good. It's it just it's just that. The the way they played in Cleveland, you was only going to get to see how good LeBron and Kyrie was because that's how they ran their offense. Everybody else was catch and shoot. K Love was catch and shoot. J.R. Smith was catch and shoot. You know, uh, you know that's how it was. But J.R. Smith is otherworldly, right? So I would say he he is on the level with Clay. I think he's better than Clay, but the, you know Clay's shooting ability is 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 so unmatched. But when you look at J.R. Smith for real, for real, and evaluate him, he's a better player than Quake, uh, Clay. J.R. Smith could be a number one on the team. I don't think Clay can. But so let's say Clay and J.R. on the same level. Draymond and Kevin Love was on the same level, right? So the only person who didn't have an equal was LeBron. LeBron was at the top of the pyramid with no equal. 
when Ky- when KD came over to the Golden State, that made it even because now you got Kevin Durant and LeBron on the same level, Curry and uh, Kyrie on the same level, Clay and Jr. on the same level, and Draymond and and uh, K Love on the same level, right? That that made it even. So why why wasn't the best player in the world leading the Cleveland Cavaliers who had a point guard? that was just as good, if not better, than the guy that you was facing on the other side in Curry. How come Golden State was still favored? That's because Golden State ran great offense. Cleveland really didn't. They ran hero ball offense, right? They just had two juggernauts running that offense, and it made it look made it look good. You look at the skill set that Braun has. There's nobody that has ever played the game of basketball that can do what LeBron James does on basketball court. You look at the skill set of LeBron James and there's nobody on the basketball court that can do what LeBron James does. But then he doesn't tell us what LeBron James does. So we got to guess. Well, we know LeBron James gets a high number of assists between seven and eight. He gets an average number of rebounds for a small force between seven and eight. Larry Bird would get you 10. Right, Larry Bird would get you ten, uh, uh, with with seven assists, right? Because he was a real small forward. He was a forward, right? So, uh, uh, LeBron James uh, gets you twenty eight points, twenty eight points, eight rebounds, eight assists, and he would run point forward or point guard, and he would score and he would assist. Um, he could pass and all that stuff, right? So he's saying nobody could do that. Well, Oscar. Robinson was the first person to make that famous. Russell Westbrook did it and won an MVP. James Harden did it and won an MVP. Luka Doncic is doing it right now. Michael Jordan did it the year before Phil Jackson came, and he actually averaged a triple-double for the second half of the season when they put him at point guard. He played shooting guard half of the season. The season wasn't going the way they wanted to. Doug Collins said, hey, look, we're going to give you the ball and, and let you run point. And for the rest of the season, he averaged a triple-double. And not just a 20-point triple-double, a 37-point triple-double. 37, 10, and 11. That's what he averaged. So for you to say nobody else can do it, no, that's not true. That There are people that can do it and who have done it and who are doing it still. The only difference between Michael Jordan and, and, and Kobe Bryant is that they was too smart to continue to do that because it's not winning basketball. And that's why LeBron's championship seems so freaking hard and he had to do so much maneuvering. And every time you get a team together, it starts to fall apart after a while. And you got to, you know, he's always making midseason trades and, oh, it's not working with this guy and it's not working with this coach and all this. So you got to make so many different moves because you're running an offense that's a dead end. It's 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 a miracle that you actually got rings. You got your first two with a super team. You can run a bad offense. If you got a super team, you can make it work. So your offense is so bad that you kept getting put out by teams that are lesser than you and you couldn't figure out that man maybe I shouldn't run maybe I shouldn't be the primary scorer and a pro- and the primary ball handler point guard and primary distributor maybe that's too much for one person to be doing right maybe may, may, maybe I should run a better offense right you haven't figured that out you said instead of me changing my style of offense let me just go and and get enough talent around me where it doesn't matter and that's what he did in Miami got those two rings then he came back to Cleveland, and that's when all the luck started happening. Oh, man, Draymond gets kicked out. Y'all come back from a 3-1 lead. Y'all was getting rocked in that series. Once again, that offense not really working for you when you go against good teams. Getting rocked in that series. Y'all should have went home, but you came back from a 3-1 lead. Then you go to L.A., everything looks horrible. You have a horrible first season. Then you make all these trades. You get AD there. Still not looking good. And then the bubble happens. And if that season wouldn't happen, you would not have a ring in L.A. Because you can't get through 82 games with this team with your age trying to play the way you play. So if it wasn't for that bubble, you wouldn't have that ring. 
So two lucky gimme rings and a super and two super team rings. Like this is crazy. Nobody. Michael Jordan could do just about all that LeBron James does. Just about all. Except for he for damn sure couldn't pass like Bron. He couldn't pass like Bron. Now, I this is the only thing I agree with. I think LeBron is a better passer than Michael Jordan. But if I grade LeBron a A plus as a passer, I grade Michael Jordan a B plus or A as a passer. Michael Jordan can pass. But Michael Jordan can score way better than he can pass. And he'll rather do that. Because guess what? He knows that winning basketball, you got to involve everybody. Why would I play point? Like getting eight assists as a point guard or get six assists off the ball when I got a point guard that's getting me eight. Like Pippen was getting you seven or eight as a point forward. And Michael Jordan was off the ball. Hey, you can facilitate Pippen because now we would we're, we're double dangerous. I got a great facilitator, six, seven point forward who can get to the hole and dunk on you and make the pass. Right? I can be a catch and shoot. I can be a post player. I can play off the ball. But guess what? I'm so good as a scorer, you got a double. And that's how I get my assist. I get my assist when that double come and if I have to dish out. That's different. Right? So uh, you're not going to get a whole bunch of highlight passes, even though Michael Jordan got a lot of them. You can go look it up. He's a great passer, right? But it's just really easy and lazy for people to be like, oh, man, LeBron passes better than Jordan. Jordan couldn't pass. No, Jordan passed very well. He averaged six assists without being a point guard. He just shot more than he passed. They had a vision like, like that. I love MJ. I think MJ is incredible. Like, MJ is MJ. Like, we all wanted to be like Mike. Like, mm -hmm. I wear 23. Come on now. Like, we all want to be like Mike. But what LeBron has been able to do and how he can control a game and, like, to, to do it this long. Like, MJ retired. Like, this just... He's not telling us that. He said how he can control a game and didn't tell... Like, what do you mean how you can control a game? What if if lebron is special at how he can control a game you have to tell me why that's important what 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 how does that make him better than people because if if your greatness and how you can control a game uh got you four rings and the way i do it got me six why are we bragging on that obviously obviously what i'm doing is better than what you're doing obviously what steph curry is doing is better than what he's doing obviously what kobe did is better than what he's doing Like seriously, like Tim Duncan got five rings in the same era with LeBron. Kobe got five. Curry got four. What what, what are we saying that is so impressive that LeBron is doing is different than everybody? Because I control the game. What? Why would Michael Jordan want to control the game if he got a point a point guard and a point forward? Really? Like, yeah. going to the finals year after year after year, Brian went eight or nine straight. He just naming all this stuff and ain't, ain't connecting it nothing. Going to the finals year after year after year. Magic Johnson came in his rookie season, won a, a, a finals as a, as a rookie, and had to play center when Kareem went down in the finals and won as a rookie. And he went to nine finals. Guess how many years Magic Johnson played before he had to retire for, for, for the virus he uh, contracted? He played 13 years. Guess how many times he went to the finals? Nine. Nine out of 13. Four years he didn't go to the finals. Nine out of 13. And here we is bragging about going to the finals nine times out of 21 years. Going on 22 years. And only one in four. Get out of here. And then he said, Mike, uh, LeBron grinded it out. Mike quit halfway through. What? So Mike grinded it out during the season by playing 82 games so i mean if you really want to think about it which one is impressive playing how many years he played before he retired the first time i think probably 10 years played 10 years played 82 games probably eight of those years you know because you had the broken foot one year uh i think i think maybe two years he didn't play 82 games out of those first 10 82 games every season 
leading score, all first team defense, all this stuff. And you on the other hand, you got LeBron, who wasn't playing defense his whole career, who took rest on defense, and then he also load managed and missed games. He didn't. I don't think he's played eighty two games more than one time in, in a season. So you getting rest during the season, and then you want to talk about he grinded it out. He's missing games left and right. 20, 20 games a season versus this guy that's playing every night, 82 games. And you saying that LeBron grinded it out and Jordan had to take a break. He didn't have to take a break. He was stressed because his dad passed. This don't make sense. Right. Nice right. Like, MJ took a break and right in the heat of that shit. Brian mm-hmm. ain't taking no break. You know what he did? Went again and again and again and again. With different guys every time. Yeah, like I said, Magic went to nine. Uh, Jerry West went to nine. Uh, Bill Russell went to 11. He probably went more than that. I think he won 11 out of 12. 11 out of 13, maybe. He went 13 times. Come on, bro. This is not impressive. This is not impressive because cause, cause he played without taking a break and met. That, like, you put, you, you're, you haven't described one thing that makes him a better basketball player. You're talking about all this fluff and you ain't connecting it to nothing. This is ridiculous. And again, so for me, that's why it's Brian over MJ for me. And on top of that, the talent nowadays is way better. And I'm sure one of the old is <laughs> gonna say, you out of your mind and this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. The talent is way better. Just like the talent at Apple yeah. It's way better than the talent that was working at Apple Everything in 1991. Aim right. is way better. Way. Um, two points. The talent at Apple now is better than the talent at Apple 10, 20 years ago. What point are you trying to make? Like, if I, all right, so Michael Jordan won six rings, uh, LeBron won four, right? So if, if an Apple person 20 years ago won six employees of the month, and the employee this year won four. But you're going to tell me what the talent at Apple is more than it was back then. So are you saying that the four employees of the month are more impressive than the six that he got back then? Because your competition is your competition. Now, let's take this back to basketball and the team sport. Um, If... If the talent level in the NBA's pool is more, then that means LeBron gets to play with more talent, not just compete against more talent, right? So, and whatever talent Michael Jordan uh, had as a pool, if you're saying the talent level was low, all right, then that means he's got less talent to play with. That makes sense? The ceiling, if the ceiling is here for Jordan's era, then you can't get a player here on your team. Every everybody that's here can't pass the ceiling in Jordan's era. So the competition is still even, right? You got teams with one superstar like Michael Jordan, Elijah Wan, Clyde Drexler, Barkley, Carl Malone, and then they got a co-star, Pippen, Stockton, um, um, Terry Porter, um, Kevin Johnson, you know, uh, you, uh, Ewan and uh, Mark Jackson, or Ewan and Derek Harper, right? So you 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 got superstar, co-star role players. So you got less uh, of of talent, but it's distributed the same way. And if you got more talent, then that's when you get distributed the same way. But this is the thing: you saying it's more talented uh, now. But LeBron is grabbing most of the talent and trying to put it on his team. Like, this dude really had Ray Allen, Chris Bosh, and Wade on his squad. There's no other team who had a dynamic like that. Not four of them dudes. Now, we talk about Boston being a big three with Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, and Garnett, but... You had Ray Allen on your bench. That's how good. That's how good your squad was. You had Ray Allen on your bench. You had Mike Miller shooting the lights out. You had Rashard Lewis shooting the lights out. Come on, man. 
the talent level is more. What does that mean? That don't mean that he was going against more competition. That means that he played with more talent. Different now. It's crazy. Braun's still up there, man. So still doing it. Still doing one it. One two, three, you know. It's You're best 20. in the league. It's crazy. It's year 20. 20 is crazy. Playing he's at a still, high level. He's still at the top of the discussion in year 20. I hear. Yeah. I, I don't know. Y'all let me know, man. Maybe I'm tripping. Y'all let me know in the comment section if he was hitting. Like I don't I don't know. I I I thought that was I thought that was lame. You let me know if he was hitting. I don't know. Coach, do you do you have any favorite? Yeah, that uh that's uh man, that's tough. Yeah, but yeah, like I said, man, uh this is the last thing I leave you with. Michael Jordan set the bar so high, it it can't be reached. It's just not going to be reached because what I was explaining earlier is that he can he made himself a complete player with no holes in his game. So unless you make yourself a complete player with no holes in your game, there's no point in comparing and even looking at your resume unless your resume is so out of this world that we ain't got no choice. I would but hey, you know, because I mean, why would you make an incomplete play? Like the bar is set this high. Why would we lower the bar to say someone in this area is better than Mike? Like he made himself a complete player with, with no holes. You can't compare you can't compare a player with holes in his game to Michael Jordan. You can't even get in the conversation with holes in your game. The first thing you gotta do before we even start debating if you're better than Mike or if you the GOAT. Is if your game is complete with no holes the only person who got their game that high of a level to reach that standard was kobe but like i said his resume was lacking so that conversation ended quick lebron has never made his game complete he still has too many holes in his game still can't shoot free throws still got robotic footwork still still travels all the time still uh have to uh run full speed to get to a, a high percentage shot you know what I mean? Uh, still all-time turnovers at all time. Uh, still can't play without the ball. Still can't post up. Still don't have a mid-range. Like, he's got two. Still take uh, plays off uh, on defense. Still air ball free throws. Still air ball three-pointers. Like, this is ridiculous. So, to have that many flaws and holes in your game, you can't be compared to Mike. It's over. You can't be compared to Kobe. It's over. Kobe was complete. Mike was complete. And uh, Kareem's resume is complete. Those three are on lock. Mike, Kareem, Kobe. Those three are on lock. The next player that comes around, if he ever get his game to be complete like Kobe or Mike, then that debate will start again. But as of right now, the debate is over. There's no debate. Um... Last thing I say, what what LeBron is trying to do is he think that the, he, if he plays long enough and he get enough records, we'll overlook the holes in his game and continue to try to compare him to Mike. But this is what he's doing. Imagine if we're sprinters and we're trying to see who the best sprinter is and we run 200 meters and I dust you. I beat you at 200 meters, but when I finish the 200 meter race and I walk off, you keep running and then you do a full lap around the track and then you come back and say, hey, look, I broke a record uh, for one lap, so it makes me a better sprinter than you. That's what LeBron is doing. The race is over. Mike played 15 years, retired, and everything that Mike has done Six rings, six finals MVPs, five MVPs, steals champion, defensive player of the year, 10-time scoring t- uh, champion, nine-time all-defensive, uh, all of those things. It, it, even passing Mike on the all-time scoring list took him 16 or 17 years when Mike only did it in 15. And really, he didn't even do it in 15. It was less than that because he missed two seasons of the injury. So it took it took you so many years to even pass Mike. So you think just because Mike stopped running and he beat you in the sprint that you can run the whole track and say, hey, I'm a long distance runner, which makes me a better sprinter than you. No, you lost as a sprinter. 
you you lost as a player you didn't make yourself as complete as michael jordan as a player you just because you continue to run or continue to play doesn't change anything you can't come back with longevity stats and say all right well now i'm a better scorer than you because i i pass you on the all-time scoring list no you just keep playing thinking that's gonna change something nobody's gonna forget that you're not a better scorer than michael jordan or kobe just because you passed them all this longevity stuff you're doing is 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 really embarrassing it really is but that's all i gotta say about it man y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section um this is interesting is uh you know this is interesting um segment right here with big perk he said something that was real cool uh hit the thumbs up hit the like button uh make sure y'all subscribe as well if you're not already subscribed and this episode is brought to you by underdog fantasy underdog fantasy is the best place to play fantasy sports i want to tell you about the easiest way to get in on some nba action with underdog fantasy and their pick them game just find your favorite player or any player for that matter pick higher or lower on that player's stats and you can win up to 20 times your money in one night pick between two or five players to fill your pick them entry get every pick right and you can net yourself some serious cash use the promo code man down sports and you can get your deposit double up to a hundred dollars you got to check on the map to make sure your state is eligible to play underdog fantasy but as soon as you do and if your state is go ahead and download underdog fantasy's app use the promo code man down sports and you can like i said you can get that a hundred dollar uh match on your first deposit and i would want to thank underdog fantasy for sponsoring man down sports so um so we just got finished talking about Draymond Green trying to claim that LeBron was the GOAT. Um, and we talked about Isaiah Thomas and 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 what he feels about Kobe Bryant and all that stuff and why the media uh, don't uh, agree with the fans and the, um, the players that all say Kobe Bryant is up there with Mike and better than LeBron, right? The media just won't let you have that. And I'm trying to figure out why. And it came to my attention something that Big Perk said on JJ Reddit's podcast that something that we all have known, but you just don't get a chance to hear a lot of people say it or admit it. Um, and what that is is Kendrick Perkins pretty much said, "Look, man, the producers tell us to say stupid stuff sometimes, just for clicks, and we we run a debate show by the." by the name you have to disagree on a topic there's no show if we don't agree i mean if we don't disagree if we agree the show's over so someone has to be on either end of the spectrum if you red i gotta be blue if you're up i gotta be down right that's how debate show work and you have producers there to write in the script and all of that stuff right so sometimes some of these people that are on here saying things don't even really believe what they really be saying and there's no better example than mr shannon sharp in 2012 saying the greatest basketball player of all time is guy air jordan and kobe in their order go lakers right there's no greater example than that so um why would he say that in 2012 and then get on undisputed with skip and all of a sudden be a LeBron guy. Well, that's because Skip was a Jordan guy. And you can't have no GOAT debate if y'all both agree to this Michael Jordan. So by his job description, he had to be pro LeBron. Does he really think LeBron is the GOAT? I don't know. I don't think he do. I don't at least he didn't in 2012, but um I don't really think you do for real, for real. I think that's part of the show, part of the act. But let's listen to what Kendra Burke said in JJ Reddick. Did you ever have a prediction that you regret? Yeah, I have a few of them. What's what's the what's <laughs> number what's, a, what's number one? What's them. number one for you? I right mean, now? like, so you know, like I know, right? Doing first take that show in particular, you know, it's a debate show. So when when you when you're prepping for it. It's all about where you disagree at 
to make great TV. It's Take a, it behind the curtain. Right. We get we get the we get the email the night before the show. Yeah. And and obviously if there's a, if there's if they're in the playoffs, if there's a game, they're gonna say we're gonna hit you up in the morning. Right. Then we, we wake up at six a.m., six thirty a.m. There's another email. There's a production call at seven thirty. There's the final email usually comes across at nine. And they go, they, they might have 30 questions. They whittle it down to five or six things that we all disagree on so that we can talk about it. So we can talk and debate. And debate. So sometimes I may play devil's advocate and oh, say, really? fuck you, right? And I remember it was last year, the Phoenix Suns jump out on the Milwaukee Bucks 2-0, right? And so I'm getting ready to go on first take the next morning. And they like, hey, Perk. Would you sit up here and, and, and say that the Phoenix Suns are on the verge of being a dynasty? <laughs> <laughs> the producers. So, so my big dumb ass, I'm like, fuck it, hell yeah. I jump out on the limb. They about to win this series anyway. Because at that point, it looked like Phoenix was the better team before like Giannis flipped the script. So I jump on first take the next morning. And I was like, when I look at Devin Booker, <laughs> <laughs> and I look at Mikael Bridges and I look at, you know, DeAndre Ayton, not just those three. Forget Chris Paul. They have the core. They have Monty Williams. They have the coaching. They go win this one. And in the next three or four years, they go win two more, which is going to make them a dynasty. I just jumped off the porch. They end up fucking losing the series, right? So it's no more dynasty. People still bring that shit up to this day. That's interesting. So JJ Reddick, kind of gave his two cents he said you know we prepping for the show you know days before or at least the day before the producers are communicating with everybody the, co- the producers are communicating with the analysts hey look man we we we, we got these topics when we might run so what that does is that tells the analysts i may maybe i need to brush up on the stats and brush up on this topic and stuff like that however the producers are being paid to make sure the show is good so i mean yeah it might be naturally where i might you know if if let's say you're a michigan guy you graduated from michigan and you graduated from ohio state i and michigan ohio state about to play all right maybe we could use that because i know one go be michigan one go be ohio state but what what about when it's times where they don't disagree on on whatever the topic is one somebody got to bite the bullet and say okay i go the other route I argue this point because we got to make a show out of it. And if the producers say we need to talk about it, we got to make a show out of it. So they're debating when there's no real debate to be had. Right. Like Kendrick Perkins said, the producers pulled him to the side and said, man, will you say that Phoenix is going to be a, a dynasty? And that ain't even trying to induce in a, a debate. That's you saying, hey, look, man, can you put, can you throw a hot take out there? I think that'll be good for the clicks. Can you say this hot take? This is this is how this is how those shows are going. So I, I mean, this ain't even a long segment. I just want to say that, and I just wanted to point that out to everybody. That, you know, just so you can know. Look, when you listening to these guys on TV, you take it with a grain of salt. Don't don't be, you know, don't be believing everything they're saying because they don't even believe everything they're saying. Most most of these dudes is going out here and arguing for this goat debate. It's just a hot topic to argue. Do you think all of these dudes really think LeBron is the second greatest player they ever seen? Come on, bro. No, they, they don't. They don't think that. A lot of them don't think that, right? So, uh, don't don't you know don't don't lose your head. You know, listen to Nick Wright, Shannon Sharp, and all this stuff, man. It's not. It's not. It's not even real like that. I don't even think even Kendrick Perkins believed it. I mean, but he grew up with LeBron. He played AAU with LeBron, so I mean, he might just be saying it out of loyalty, just like. Just like uh like um Draymond Green is like you know he's signed to Clutch Sports, Clutch Sports have uh gotten him paid with the Golden State Warriors twice, he two huge contracts, and he probably feels like he owed LeBron a lot. He, I mean he met his wife at LeBron's, was it LeBron's wedding or one of LeBron's parties? You know he really probably feel like he owed LeBron, right? So he's he's gonna be loyal to the soil. That's how he is. But I mean. Most of these dudes don't believe they don't they, they don't believe LeBron is the goat man. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section though. The last topic I'm gonna get into is uh Kenny Smith and Jalen Rose. They 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 both uh weighed in. Kenny Smith, first and foremost, 
he's always been vocal on TNT, um, doing that little halftime show and their post game show and stuff like that. And he's he said it a couple of times that he didn't have LeBron in his top ten. I don't think right. And um, um, so he said that a couple of times. Jalen Rose, he said something similar. Um, but uh, this is my first time hearing them say what they're saying here. I want y'all to hear it uh, real quick. I'm gonna get my commentary and then we go in the show. Mm-hmm. So when you say just now, uh, you say things that you believe they're authentic. So that means that what you said, I think it was last week, that uh, LeBron might be in your top 10 all time. You authentically believe that. Yeah, I think for me, my top five players of all time. And this is we're talking about threads of greatness. Like, let's let's separate this. We're talking about threads of greatness. But, you know, I'm old enough to actually have seen these guys when they were in their superpowers. So I've seen Michael Jordan in his superpowers. I've seen Kareem Abdul-Jabbar when he was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the superpower. I've seen mm-hmm. him when he was Lou Alcindor. I've seen, you know, uh, the greats be great. So when I'm comparing it, I'm like, well, it looks very similar to what he's doing. Or it even looked better at times. So I'm not going on a reference of highlights. So is he on a tra- trajectory to jump into the top five of all time? For sure. But with three championships and he's still on that trajectory, he's not there yet. In my opinion, just in my opinion, uh, I think will he be there? Yeah, I think he will. But is he there now? I would have Bill Russell, Michael Jordan, Wilt Chamberlain, you know, ahead of him. I would just just personally me. So how long after you said that take? So, and and this is this is some interest, and they're doing something that I don't typically do when I make when i make a list like this they're they're going to the paper resume a little bit too much too heavy right and they're not evaluating the player uh they're not picking apart the holes in this game and pointing out the strengths in this game that's how i do it because it's it's a a collaboration for me it's i got to know how high you are as a player uh, what what level of a player are you at and then i bring in your resume and I marry the two and see where you fall out uh, for, for my list. And it seems like Kenny Smith just went straight to the resume and was like, he hasn't done enough yet. You know, and, and I don't quite understand it, but, you know, because I guess what he's saying is, is, is uh, once, you, once you're so good as a player, we can kind of see that you're in, in a category. Like we, we could see that Tim Duncan is, is, is an all time great. We can see that Jordan is all time great. We can see that Kobe, Bird, Magic. We can see that they're all time greats. So we just put them in this all time great category, and then whichever one can achieve the most, a uh, a uh, uh, rise up on the list. I guess that's how they're doing it. They're just okay, man. That's a great player. Let's see what he do, and you know. But I don't I don't see it that way. Like I've already graded LeBron. He's not going to change as a player. The player that he is now. Um, that's it. Like he's 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 already, you know, because when you come in the league, you're on you're on a rise to get to your prime or your peak, and your prime or your peak is is a combination of your physical prime, uh, you know, because you come in as a boy, especially if you come out of high school, you come in as a boy, and then your physical prime reaches its peak. But then, as far as learning the game and uh honing your skills in you might come in like jason kidd did without a jump shot so you gotta hone that in you know or, or you might come in uh like like uh let's say scoot anderson right now and you don't have you don't have the professional basketball game in your head yet and it might take you a year or two for the game to slow down a little bit so there's a lot of things that got to come together but once they all come together at the same time then you reach your peak that's what we call the prime. And you ride your prime for as long as you can. And the first thing that you lose, because you're never going to lose your IQ, you're going to always continue to gain skill set. So the only thing that makes you uh, uh, exit your prime is your body when it fails due to injury or due to normal wear and tear or or due to just being old for the time. So eventually you start to decline. Well, LeBron James... As, as far as his body it's not gonna get no better so at the very best 
he's maintaining but knowing how father time works he's declining but he's probably declining slower than everybody you know because he's still able to do a lot of things at this age 39 but he's declining so he's not in his prime anymore so we're not going to see any better lebron james than we've seen 2012 that's probably the, i mean that's around that time that's probably the best lebron james we ever gonna see we're not gonna see that again right so i already know what type of player you are it's not gonna get no better than what i would have already seen so what can you what what can change my mind right now by you accomplishing something that's not going to do anything because what did it do for gary payton i know what type of player gary payton is just because he went when he was a thousand years old and got a ring with miami heat this is that is that ring gonna make me think of gary payton as a better point guard than i already thought he was that he, that he was so at this point you just stat pad and you just you just adding stuff on right all, all, all of this stuff you're getting now is just foreskin right you don't need it but if you got it okay cool keep it clean but it that is it's, it's not doing anything just because you got foreskin don't make your yours you know any better than anybody else's right you just got foreskin that's extra skin you got extra skin that's it right so that's 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 how i'm looking at it. he's trying to add all this stuff to it that's not going to change nobody's thought process about where you rank and i don't agree with kenny smith on saying that if he accomplished more then he can rise up the list i don't do it that way um you know um you have to make yourself a better player than someone to pass them on a list and right now i got lebron in the in the debates for number four uh number five area he's in that debate four or five right um and you know there's a lot of good players in that debate uh but it's also a lot of players that don't have lebron in his in their top five at all here's here's another player that don't so who are your starting five nba players of all time so positionless 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 yeah no doubt so magic and isaiah this is your fab five yes exactly NBA. so it's it, it's gotta be it's gun. here's the team are we getting him in trouble for a third time <laughs> so magic okay isaiah jordan bird okay fifth el capitan kareem okay okay that that that's my all-time five it's a unique and, list i have to say and, and by the way like you can hate me and or hate my list but when you really break down the history of the game like all of them is top 12 of all time do you think it makes a difference when you you pick your top five on what era you kind of watch because it's hard for me to ever i know cream is the greatest but i haven't studied basketball back in that day so i know for me it's like i saw a little bit of michael I saw a lot of LeBron mm-hmm. from 14 and up, yep. you know, Iverson was my favorite player going up. No doubt. Also. Bubba so, Chuck. so that was kind of the era. And then you, but you hear some people ride or die. Jordan's greatest mm-hmm. of all time. There's no discussion in this net, but then there are people younger than me. It's hard to even imagine that. And you can watch tape, but if you didn't live through, am I wrong? If you didn't live through that era, it's hard. Well, it's hard to compare eras, but there are a few things that allow you to do so. And when you talk about the best players of all time, you ultimately start talking about who's the GOAT. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about GOAT, the first word is greatest. Mm -hmm. That means achieved more than somebody else. Okay. And if we're comparing Michael Jordan and LeBron, for example, Michael Jordan got 10 scoring titles. Bron has one. Michael Jordan has been all NBA. Michael Jordan has been defensive player of the year in the NBA. LeBron hasn't. Michael Jordan has two separate three-peats. LeBron doesn't have a three-peat. LeBron doesn't have one three-peat. Yeah. And so, like, you don't necessarily even need to watch them play to acknowledge that what Michael Jordan achieved just solely on the court. You always got to watch him play greater. It's more than 
So why isn't Bill Russell in your top five then? He is. Wait. He is. I just gave Kareem that starting spot at the five. Okay. So he's I have starting. never. He's no, on your team, but he's not starting. Let me tell y'all something about basketball 101. <laughs> if y'all ever do a list and y'all get past three and I don't hear Bill Russell's name, delete. Block. I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm going to just block you. That's what I'm going to do. If I see any Note social post. Include yeah, Bill I'm going to block you. <laughs> Because 11 championships in 13 years is greater than me trying to act like LeBron is ahead of him. Yeah. Like, and what ends up happening is, and by y'all, just so y'all know, I love LeBron James. That's my guy. Maverick Carter's my brother. We played fantasy together for years. Rich Paul, that's my guy. I loved him. Randy, I loved him. So what ends up happening is people think, if I don't say he's the greatest, that I don't like him or I'm hating. You haven't hated on him once here. Correct. Though. No. But that's what allowed me to start kind of realizing I'm good at my job. Because that's my <laughs> man. Yeah. But I can't act like what he's achieved so far is greater than Jordan, than Kareem, than Russell, for sure. Now, you can argue with me about magic. But here's some magic math. Magic played 13 years. He went to the finals nine times. Yeah, that's and he won five championships, that's including as yeah. a rookie. Yeah, yeah, that's big. That's that's big. But I I disagree with the achievements being the front runner and a conclusion you make on your list. But I will say this, if that's your criteria and you follow it and it's fair and you apply it across the board and you're not just applying it to certain guys to disqualify them, I don't have no problem with how you do it. If, if, if you're going to, if you're going to have a criteria that, that you're going to apply to LeBron James, you need to apply that same criteria to Kobe, you know, or vice versa. You know, you can't, you can't be saying, you know, uh, like I, I think, uh, who who was that that was talking? Um, I think uh, Stephen A. Smith was saying that, um, you know, he you know he pretty much kind of uh, ranks Kobe low uh, because he played with Shaq and got three rings with Shaq, so he kind of say his his rings are watered down. But he didn't he didn't apply that same across the board to everybody who played with other great players that's in the top fifty or top seventy five. So that I, I think that's lame for you to have a criteria that only only that criteria is just for one player, like that's dumb. So uh, if if that's how they do it, if they go by achievement, it's great. If you're not gonna evaluate the player, uh, great. But I evaluate the player, right? Uh, I call I, you know everybody call him an all around player. I call him a 360 player, and the reason why I got Michael Jordan and Elijah Wine there is because I think they were the greatest complete players uh for post players and for wing players not point guards but post players and wing players i have a, a criteria that uh and i use michael jordan and elijah Wan as the standard right and when people say all around it's a misconception of what all around is they think all around means did you stuff the stat sheet with points rebounds and assists that's not all around all around is uh, are you complete on offense and are you complete on defense and then do you have the other intangibles like did you have uh, uh, are you fit right you know we got a lot of players that are good but they come in out of shape I know Carmelo Anthony was a great player but you know with his diet you know uh, he was out of shape for a lot of a lot of his years in New York not so much after New York he got it, he got it under control after New York but uh, and I think when he was really young in uh, Denver, you couldn't really notice it. But Melo's always been on the heavy side, right? You know, so you know, fitness is 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 a big part of it. And then your you know your consistency. Can you keep it? Can you keep doing it over a long period of time? You know, can you do it uh, without being injured? Can you you know uh, can you can you play your game? So that's my three hundred and sixty circle, right? And then when when I grade wings, just just wings, I'm not gonna do centers this year, but uh, I mean right now because. We're talking about LeBron, Kobe, and Mike. But when we talk about offense, this is what I expect from a complete player. 
uh, uh, in my opinion. I want you to be a dominant scorer. That's first and foremost, right? That's going to allow me to be able to run my offense through you. That's going to allow uh, uh, me to be able to play um, uh, after the double comes to try to stop you. That's going to occupy the team's best defender, right? So I'm pulling your best defender. I'm pulling your help defense. I'm pulling double teams. And that's creating offense for my squad because you're such a dominant scorer, right? But I need you to be a dominant scorer with and without the ball, right? So you have some people who are dominant scorers. They can get you 30. They can get you 40. They can even get you 50 if they get hot. But they have to have the ball to do it. And, for example, guys like James Harden, guys like Russell Westbrook, uh, Luka Doncic right now, and LeBron James, probably half of his career, was one of those guys who couldn't do anything off the ball, right? Uh, when you have to have the ball and you're the guy I'm depending on the score, that kind of causes a problem for me. So um, I need you to be able to do it with and without the ball. The reason why I want you to do it with the ball, too, is because when it's fourth quarter time and I need a bucket, running the plays is not – it's the margin of error is smaller – uh, during crunch time, and if I run him, if I'm running plays, and I gotta set screens and throw passes, you know, and and we know that the referee swallow their whistles in those crunch time moments, and you go get away with more fouls and all that stuff, I can't I can't afford to uh, be trying to run uh, my guy around screens because I know he will get knocked around, and they go they go allow more, and then the you know the passing lanes go be really tight, you know, so we you know we we do less. It'd be better if I can just get it to my best player, get tell everybody to get out of the way, and then he can go get a bucket that he don't have to get to the rim to go get, right? Uh, so that's why it's important to be able to do it with him without the ball. And, you know, uh, versatile score, I mean, not just getting to the uh, rim. Can, can you do it in the post? Can you do it without the ball? Can you do it shooting it? Can you do it driving it? Can you do it on fast break? Can you do it at the free throw line? Uh, be a great shooter. Um, I want you to be a great shooter. If you're going to be my number one scorer and if you're a complete player, you can't be a below average shooter. I don't even want you to be an average shooter. I want you to be good to great, right? It don't have to be from three. It can be from mid. Uh, it can be inside the three-point line, but you have to be able to knock down that jump shot because most of the time that's all you're going to get. Um, you got to be able to uh, knock down your free throws. And for a wing, to, uh, wing player, I need you to be a great free throw shooter, not good, not average definitely not below average. I think you'd be a great free throw shooter because the ball is going to be in your hand in crunch time and I don't want them to be like, yeah, we put him on the line, he only 50% or he only 65%. We can put him on the line. Nah, I want you to be able to have that ball, be confident, want them to come foul you. And as a passer, you don't have to be a super passer. You're not my point guard. You need to be a reliable passer. I would say an average passer, maybe above average. Right. But I don't need you to be Magic Johnson because you're not my point guard. Right. So that's that's my criteria for offense and for a complete player. And in defense, I want you to be great on the ball and off the ball. On ball defense, I want you to be ferocious. I want you to be like Michael Jordan or Scottie Pippen or Kobe Bryant or Pat Beverly. Jay Kidd was even a good on ball defender. But I want you to be able to do it off the ball as well. Right. I want you to be, be able to uh, deny. Uh, Steph Curry running off of screens or Clay running off of screens. I want you to be able to deny that. I want you to be able to uh, chase him. I want you to be able to get in the pass lanes and get steals, all of that good stuff. Uh, Force turnovers, block shots, steals, all that, you know, uh, 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 shot clock violations. You, whatever, you, whatever you do, I want you to be able to force turnovers. I want you to be uh, able to be somebody who can guard the best player. Right now, if if Dallas Mavericks is playing uh, uh, that, like they just beat Minnesota tonight, Right, uh, which was good, but uh, with that matchup, Anthony Edwards as a wing is a is a is a great offensive player. If he really got hot, I can't go to Kyrie Irving or Luka Doncic to go say, "Hey, man, can you go calm him down?" Neither one of them can go guard Edwards. They they probably had uh, um, Grant Williams guarding Edwards most of the game. Or, or, or maybe Tim Hardaway Jr., but they can't even rely on their best player to say, hey, man, go stop that dude. You could do that with Jordan and Pippen, right? You could do that with uh, Garnett uh, when he was guarding bigs. You know, whoever your best player, Elijah, you can do that with Elijah. Whoever your best player is, can they go lock down their position 
or or, or, or two positions. Can you, you know with Mike? You might he might be able to do a small forward and shooting guards. Maybe some of the point guards, not the real quick ones, especially not in his old age. But you know, um, I want you to be able to guard the best player on the other team, um, and I want you to be an above average post player if you're a wing player. You you know, because a lot of a lot of wings post up as well, and I want your effort to be there, right? So that's uh, that's how I look at it. That's how I grade players. I, I'm, I'm looking at all those things. Um, you know, I, I, I look at that, and there's a lot of people that are lacking in that area. And even with LeBron James, no, he stopped playing defense. That whole defensive slide, LeBron is not even really doing that no more. And he definitely can't do things off the ball with his offense. He definitely can't be relied on with the free throw shooting. And his shooting is 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 not uh, good anywhere inside the uh, the the mid range. His three point has gotten better, but you know that's hit or miss. You know, so when I'm grading players like that, I'm looking for completeness. Michael Jordan was complete. He checked all those boxes. He's a complete player. So you can't bring me a player that's not complete and tell me to compare him with that just because he was able to achieve some things on his resume that make it look like he's similar to a great player like Michael Jordan. But that's all I wanted to say, man. I appreciate y'all hanging with me uh, to the to the bitter end, the great end. Uh, and as always, I just want to let y'all know to subscribe, hit that like button, hit the share button, leave a comment. Uh, yeah, if you're watching us on Facebook, do the same thing over YouTube and do that. And we're brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Make sure you go and use the promo code Man Down Sports. Uh, your first deposit is going to get matched up to a hundred dollars. So uh, y'all can do that and start earning some money. I catch y'all on the next episode. Underdog Fantasy is the best place to play fantasy sports. I want to tell you about the easiest way to get in on some NBA action with Underdog Fantasy and that Pick'em game. Just find your favorite player or any player for that matter. Pick higher or lower on that player stats, and you can win up to twenty times your money in one night. Pick between two or five players to fill your pick them entry. Get every pick right, and you can net yourself some serious cash. Use the promo code MANDOWNSPORTS, and you can get your deposit doubled up to $100. You got to check on the map to make sure your state is eligible to play Underdog Fantasy. But as soon as you do, and if your state is, go ahead and download Underdog Fantasy's app. Use the promo code MANDOWNSPORTS, and you can, like I said, you can get that $100 uh, match on your first deposit. And I would want to thank Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring.